Hello everyone, um, and welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial where I'll be teaching you code and stuff. Now, from the last video uh, that I made about book or object-oriented programming, it seemed that there was a request that I actually show you how to use this like in practicality. And so this is what this video is all about. So we have the same setup from before and I will be explaining a few more new things and actually showing you how it works because in the last video, uh, I simply just did this. I, I said, uh, this guy ran when I ran the function that the uh, object inherited and that's like, that doesn't really help a beginner to show like what is the use case. So now I will show you what is the use case. So first of all, we need a name and I don't know if I explained this in my last video, but this function right here, where you call a new object, this uh, pseudo function, it's called a constructor. It will construct a new object. It makes sense. This is a, feed, uh, a defined term within the uh, programming space, basically. So we call this a constructor object and let's pass in some parameters so we can create this object. It's going to, it's going to have a name. Um, it's gonna have a base health. I guess, um, yeah, parent will do fine. So we can immediately set where it is in the game. And I'll just uh, do some type checking. Don't worry, this will, this, you, you can ignore this part. This just makes it so that uh, I know what, what the type of each parameter is gonna be. That's basically what this means. So, like, the name has to be a string, a health has to be a number, and the parent has to be an instance, or you can leave it blank and it won't set a parent. So we create a new object or basically under this class as a table, and it's now set a meta table to itself, The I mean the module script, and the module script points to itself, so hence when I call anything, it's, it's gonna fill in for me. It's gonna have walk, attack, run, die, all that good stuff right there, like we discussed in the last video. So the thing about this, right, is we actually have to uh, create an, an, an like a, a physical animal to show you how it works. So I'm just gonna do that real quick. Later. Alright, so I'm back with a with a rig, and if I test it, it should work properly, like a like an actual NPC. I mean, move, so that means it works, right? That's the testing all, <laughs> that's all the testing we need. So we have a little animal object and no Preston, before we begin, this is not one of your pets, okay? So don't try and sue me. It's not gonna have any animations because we, you don't really need animation to showcase that, you know, it's alive. So now we'll quickly store this in our server storage. So, you know, it doesn't show up in the game before we spawn it in, cause that would make no sense. Now, since this, entire module script is about this one animal object we can actually just save this uh animal like original animal model in a variable so let's just do that so this is the original model in the server storage so of course when we call it the new function the constructor we have to make a new one so let's just do self.model equals to the original model clone. Now we have a clone. And we'll also do uh, at the end, I guess, self.model.parent equals to parent. Now if the player, I mean, if the programmer doesn't pass in a parent, it will just pick parent to the new, I guess. <laughs> now let's look at the other ones. We can see that well we named it something with this parameter. So not only are we gonna save the name inside this table, we're also going to name the model itself. So the model's name is gonna be this name thing. Does it make sense? Yeah, I hope it makes sense. And also we pass in the help. And this is gonna be the max health, so we can do um, max health, or rather make it uh, have a distinction. We we'll call it base health instead. We we'll set it to this health, 
and for the self to model the actual physical like animal, we set a humanoid um, and we'll set its health. Oh, we actually have to set the max health first to its health, and we'll set its health afterwards. So, health. Makes sense. So now we actually have like a model, like a real thing, and we can parent it to the workspace. And you know what? Let's make it so that if we don't pass in the param uh, parameter, it will just automatically go into the workspace. How about that? Much easier. So now we have this object, and this object has three things inside this table. Uh, the, uh, the by the way, the table is the object. Sorry. Um. So this. Table will have three things. It will have the model, the actual physical animal, its name, and its base health right there. Even though you know you can find it in the physical humanoid itself, but that's fine. It's better to save it like this anyway. Right. So these are the four functions uh, in the last video, I think. <laughs> so let's just make it so that it actually does work. We want it so that when the animal runs, uh, it runs. Pretty simple. So we can just do call selves and we, we know that this self will refer to this original one we created. So let's just quickly do local animal class and we do require uh, game.subscript service dot animal. We'll make a new animal. This is just an example. Of course, you wouldn't like use only one animal like this. You you make it so that like every single I don't know few seconds you spawn a new animal, or maybe you want to spawn in NPCs for the players to kill. But for the, let's just spawn it with one variable for now, and we'll call it um, a. We we'll call it a really created name. It will have fifty health. And we won't set a parent because we know it will default it defaults to the workspace. And now the new animal will have all these functions. Right, let's not to get too carried away, go back to the original script. So we know we save the model um, value, which is the actual physical animal, as a as this key right here, so we call it that. And then we'll reference the humanoid. And since it's running, right, we're gonna have to increase its speed because it's running so we set it to walk speed um to set it to like something like i don't know maybe it's running speed is 25 and then it would move to a position oh, obviously well we need to make it so that we can put it as any position it will run to so let's just set it as a parameter right here and now it will run to that position so uh self dot model dot humanoid move to and it's gonna move to a position now maybe the programmer won't put a position here because you must always assume that you are an idiot and sometimes you forget to put stuff and you don't want to do that to destroy your entire code system so we'll put a default and we'll just say if we forgot to put a position let's just put it to zero or more specifically we can put it just like this there we go. It will move to the origin if you forgot to put something here. And we'll do the same right here. And we can basically copy this run code over to the walk code, but instead we can change the walk speed to just 10 because walking is slower than running. Now, this one will be a, <laughs> a little interesting because animal attack um, needs to like generally attack a person. This is a little bit harder to code, but I'll show you exactly how. So first of all, we'll pass in a humanoid, and this will be the target. So let's just call it the target, and it will be a humanoid type. So let's just call it target hum. And then since this animal might be feral, I will just assume that it runs towards the person and attacks them. Now here's the interesting part, we can actually call uh, self, and we can actually just do like this do this oh wait no sorry we can actually just do self on the colon run and this calls this you can yeah so that's very neat look at that you can see that so 
we can call it its own um, function right here, self run, and then we pass in a position as we can see. It's not auto filling because um, it doesn't know what self is yet in this context, but we know, and self is the table which has this uh, function attached to it, so it does exist. The position will be the target arm, and then we'll reference the model and then its primary part because that's where it located all the time and then we reference this position now we have to take into account that the the prey <laughs> yeah i think it's what we call it the prey would most likely want to run away so we're gonna have to call it constant while pass dot wait point two seconds make sure it's not too laggy so that it constantly wants to run towards that person scary but now it's getting kind of confusing because now instead um we, we can do self.model, which is our own physical animal's primary part, dot touch. Um, and it, we can connect it to a function which like attacks the person that we're meant to attack. So let's say we can add a few more variables here. This is the neat part about uh, using OOP, is you can call self.current target right here. We set it to nil because he has no target yet. And as you can see, we shouldn't do this because um, we are connecting a new function every time we run attack. And you might run attack a lot of times. So what's the point of like, you know, continuously connecting a function? Instead, what we will do is connect one touch event to the animal one time at the constructor. So now it's gonna have Although you're still creating a new function every time, it's not as much as calling attack every time you are uh, making a new function for when the primary part is touched. So that's okay, that's, that's cool. We also set a cooldown so it doesn't insta-kill the enemy, so we say attack, attack cooldown. And it will be, it will be two seconds, or one second, it's better. And we'll say, uh, this is the other part that is touched, by the animal, I will say this. So basically, we'll first check if the uh, model or the other part's parent has a humanoid in the first place. It just follows the structure. Um, if it doesn't have a humanoid, then this is automatically not going to be true and it's going to return. Uh, otherwise, if it if there is a humanoid and the humanoid just happens to be our current target, you then hurt this current target. So now we can just do self dot current target, um, and then we'll do we'll, we'll do we'll make it so that it loses some health. So we do health um, a minus equals uh, let's say fifteen. We'll make it do fifteen damage. This animal is getting kind of feral and we can't forget we set a CD here so let's just say that if our self dot attack CD actually this should be a boolean this shouldn't be a number uh, so if, if self dot attack CD equals to true then we'll return because we don't want it to attack while it's on cooldown and this statement can be simplified to just if self dot attack cd now the moment we deem that it is going to attack we will set the self dot attack cd to true so that we wait and now we wait a while so we wait uh one second as discussed before and then we'll set it back to false and this works because this is the same exact object so it's always going to be in this table and this um, value it's gonna change according to one thread so it doesn't matter if you touch it multiple times it won't set it will just return so now we have a touch function for the attack function right here and while task.wait it's gonna keep on running but we'll make it so that if the target harm uh, get state I suppose equals to inner in dot state hard dot dead then we'll break this loop because well we can't we don't want to attack it like an actual dead person because it's already dead so what what's the point and with this we'll just easily set this self dot 
เอ่อ self dot orient ท่านี้ to this target now and after it is dead we can just think we can we can forget to reset it to nil right so this should be the attack function and since this, this is such a complicated function it's better to test this okay so let's say we have a new animal and it's called a and it has 50 health uh, and let's just immediately on start we'll make it run to click the tree dot new and we'll make it do a like a long dash to 50 0, 0. and then after it does that we'll make it walk back to it's 0, 0, 0, the original point, and we can just omit that because we know the default is 0, 0, 0. Now, if you were paying a little bit of close attention, you will realize that this runs after the other immediately because this, there's no weight here. So why don't we put a weight in this function? Well, we can't really do that because, you know, the attack function itself uses run, and if every 0.2 seconds when we call this run function, it has to wait until it moves to the position of the prey, the prey would have already left that position a long time ago. So what we need to do is we need to put the weight in this script instead. So we know we can get new animal and it will be the table object. And we know we have the model, so why not just do this? We can do the models humanoid uh, move to finish weight. This is just a test, so you probably won't do this in an actual game. But as you can see, we made a new animal. We'll make it do a 50 meter or 50 start run, I guess. It's like a, it's like an athlete. And we'll wait for it to run finish. And then we'll walk and then we'll wait for it to run finish. Now, honestly, I'm not gonna do make it do anything else after it walks back to zero. So let's we can just get rid of this. And we can run the game and see what it does. As you can see, it's running. And it's walking and it's slower on the way back because it's walking you know they also definitely look better with animations but like i said you don't really need animations to show the functionality and practicality of this system and he rather he ran rather quickly to the 50 so let's run make it run to 200 instead yeah i think it can't be too lazy no and there it goes super quick it's super quick look at it Go, 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 go. And now it's gonna walk back. Now I do have to note that the move to function for the humanoid. Do, yeah, like, like it stops after exactly 8 seconds. Why did Roblox code it like that? I don't know why, but I hate, I also hate that fact that if you use this move to function for the humanoid, it automatically stops after 8 seconds for no reason. It, it just does that. That's like, the Roblox made that themselves. And so now we are gonna test the attack function. So let's do add new animal dot attack. Now, how do we know what the humanoid is gonna be? Well, usually you code in the entire system to detect uh, the closest thing to you. But since we predicted that I will spawn in the moment I hit play, we can just simply do uh, workspace and my name would be Obi Sword, and my humanoid will be automatically detected. So don't do this, okay? This. This, this is not what you should do in an actual game because this is just a run test like I know I'm gonna spawn in and I know my humanoid is gonna be there oh that's because I forgot to put a weight and it loads too quickly uh, this runs too quickly to know that I'm in the game so let's put a nice little password weight 5 seconds so it will attack me after I fully loaded in oh it should work it's gonna it's gonna dash from me. I'm kind of scared. Oh, okay, 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 dude. Okay, okay. So it's still kind of slow because it's like trying to hump me. But if I slow down and let it touch me, wait. No, I forgot. All right. As you can see just now, it didn't t touch me and hurt me. Do you know why? Because it literally did not. Like it literally cannot touch. I I set the cat touch to. False man, I'm an idiot, Jesus Christ. Alright, so now we try it again. And I let it touch me. Now this sounds really wrong, but it should hurt me. Okay, now this is really bad. Uh, I'm admitting into a bunch of errors. And I know as a uh, as a video maker, you sh I shouldn't be like showcasing you errors. 
But as a developer, if you're striving to become a, a developer, this is exactly what would happen. If you make this kind of system, you're constantly gonna run in errors. So we'll keep doing debugging until we find. So right now it says that uh, this is erroring because it, it seems like it thinks current target is nil. And I realize why. So we'll just set it here. If if there is no attack target, because right now it's just constantly searching for a thing to touch and it, it runs the code. But we will only want this to run when there is a current target. So if self, if not self current target, or it's on cooldown, then we'll not run this at all. So yeah, as a developer, just know that will happen a lot. Red text. Yep, and now it's actually touching me. It's actually touching me. This animal is feral. This animal is super feral. Get get away from me. And I'll just let it kill me because I want to test that it stops chasing me after I die. Oh, it, it just flinged me super far. Th thanks for that. And now since we only call the attack once, it won't attack me anymore anyway. When I touch it, it won't care because its current target right now is nil. It works. And then we just quickly fix the hip height. Right now it's super tall, and it's like floating in the air like some sort of god-like figure. Right, what's the next one? Well, that's an easy one. <laughs> uh, we can just call self dog model. And I'm pretty sure I can destroy it, but let's just do it, make it so that first it, it sets the health to zero. self dog model dot health dot zero, and it will. It would destroy up to one one second. It would like it, the model will be destroyed one second later. Now here's an important part. This is what we call the cleanup function. So this is when the object finally uh, reaches its purpose. So like example, when you kill an NPC in an actual game and it's using object oriented programming. You, you want to clean that NPC up, like you don't want it to exist anymore because it died, right? So you think this is it's just as simple as this, but no, you have to remember that we still have this connection right here and we still have all these values right here. And we need to get rid of these values because they actually take up memory. Uh, and we don't want it to take up memory when it shouldn't exist anymore in the first place. So what we'll do is, first of all, we'll make sure we um, Table clear the entire self to make sure there's no more references to any of these values here. So the Roblox will clean it up themselves and then we'll table dot freeze it so that it can no longer be added to or change or anything like that. So this will make sure that Roblox uh, cleans itself up. But I'm pretty sure the connection here for the primary part dot touch, uh, Roblox will also automatically disconnect this once we destroy the model, cause you know, why would you, why would Roblox think, oh boy, I need to look for it being touched when the part itself can get destroyed, right? Well, here's the thing, right? Uh, in other cases, some connections like this, if it's not connected to an actual physical object and you're connecting like a more abstract type of event, you need to disconnect it in the cleanup function, like yourself. So this is, you have to keep track of that. Okay, just a reminder. So, we'll, we'll take a look at this. And as you can see, the attack function is actually a yielding function right now. So that means that if I call attack, right? Uh, if it wasn't a yielding function, it will wait past uh, five seconds. It will run this function and then immediately call print. But since here, we basically inhabit and yield this entire function until the the prey dies. It will wait until the prey dies and then print. So just keep in mind of that. Now if you don't want this to happen, we can easily just coroutine wrap this entire thing. But we don't really need to do that right now. Like right? this is the thing to keep in mind. Uh, it attacks my humanoid. And this is actually convenient in our case because I want the animal to immediately die after, well, it kills me. It's just, so it's kind of like a suicide killer, which is kind of fucked up when you think about it, but 
Yeah, which is what we made it to do. <laughs> right, so heal me. Okay, that was a little bit anticlimactic, and it's like trampling me. I stand on top of its head, so you know, it, it, yeah, that's better. Oh, move. Health is not a valid model of. Oh, whoops! I should have referenced the humanoid here. Now it's useful for me to um, show you the errors rather than like cutting them out of the video because you have to understand that as if you are a developer, as you. So, yeah, we are not perfect, okay? We make mistakes and re errors will always happen. So this is just part of the process, you have to understand it. So if you want to make a good system, you just just know that there's always going to be red text. Like, you, you're never going to make a perfect code all in one try. And it killed itself the moment I tried to leave. Now we have another red text, and it says that I try to attempt to modify a read-only table. Now, why is that? Well, that's because uh, I wait tossed on, I, I waited for one second, and I tried to um, destroy base. I tried to change the value here, but by the time it reached this line of code, this line of code already ran, so it already froze it. So we just make sure that if table is frozen uh self then return just a little little sneaky code right there it's very spaghetti code but this is just a practical example of the oop system so now i added two new functions and as you can see i i think you understand by now why it's kind of organized because you have you can write individual code for each individual function for the animal and every animal that you add with this new function will have these exact same uh, functions. So we can, this function, I wanted to make the animal make sound and we'll just do this one quickly cause this is really easy cause we can just do self.name equals new name and we add it, add it as a parameter which is string uh, model dot name. There we go. So now, after we attack, we'll just rename it to uh, animal wanted. Or oh, rather, wanted animal. Because it killed someone, you know, it's it's really fucked up. Like, we want this animal now, and we want to arrest it. <laughs> we increase the damage, just so it can speed, speed things up a little bit, and set it to 45. Hey, hey, what's up? Hey, you- Oh no, it's attacking me! No, this animal's- And uh, now it's a wanted animal. This is what you get. Now you're gonna go to prison. Do you feel proud of yourself? Yeah, that's what I thought so. And for the sound function, I need to quickly find a sound from the uh, toolbox. So I will be right back. Animal sound. That, that seems easy enough. What is this? Freddy Kong. Uh, that's good enough for animals. <laughs> so we'll we'll parent this uh, audio, the Freddy Hong, inside the animal object, so we can easily find it. And the moment we call sound, let's just make it so that self dot model dot, uh, and it's called Freddy Hong. So we're gonna have to do this because it has a space in it, and we'll just make it play easy. So this is an easy function, and I kind of want to make it so that every time. Um, the moment it turns feral and tries to attack me, I want to make it so that it, it it starts honking like aggressively. So we do a new coroutine here. All right, this is just an example. It's really poorly efficient, and we will call this first so we can start a new thread and then you with this function right here. Because if we call it afterwards, it's not gonna coroutine wrap it until the prey is died. As we can see from the wild task dot wait here, and we just speak it so that a uh, wow new animal, and we can also find the current target value here, which is crazy. Is is the crazy part about this? So wow current target, we we'll wait. Actually, we we'll wait. Oh, we we'll wait like a second, so to make sure that this has ran up up before this this run, because. Uh, the moment we call this, the current target is going to be new and it's going to instantly dissolve the loop. So we wait one second, after it, we have called attack and they have set the current target, then we can run this loop. 
So while we still have a prey and a current target, we'll make it so that us dot wait one and it's going to it's gonna it's gonna make a sound. It's gonna make a sound every one second when it's angry. <laughs> Why not? Right. So my bad. I just realized that uh, you know I my OBS wasn't recording the actual in-game sound. So now I made it so that you can probably. It's probably sound now. And Oh, oh, it's very angry, it's very angry, please don't touch me, please don't touch me. Dude, come on man, look, look, we can talk about this, we can talk about this. You are, you are a joke, you are a joke, I hate you. You freaking animal. So yeah, that's basically how you would use this. Um, the, this script right here. And honestly, to make it, uh, more clear, let's just call this the behavior. And note that we are actually only calling one animal at a time, right? So, another crazy thing is, if you want this specific behavior to exist within the animal, what you can always do is do function animal and we'll name it a dumb's name like wait and then burn barrel. Alright, just do this. You can just paste it, this in, paste it in there, get rid of this. A new animal. Wait and then turn barrel. We will change this all a new animal to self, so it's the right right variable. And we don't actually even have to do this. I just realized we can make it so that it automatically does this behavior the moment we spawn it. So we can just put it all right here. Very nice, very cool. We we'll make sure there's no U functions for the constructor because you never want a U. Oh, there it is one U. So we're gonna have to coroutine wrap this entire. Uh, behavior inside uh yeah it's like the constructor function and just note that this is the behavior Be this is a preset behavior and every time we call a new animal it's gonna always do this behavior now if you want different animals to do different behaviors you know exactly what to do uh because all you have to do is maybe you pass in like the type of animal that you want the pre preview type and you can make the functions uh, act accordingly to the type. So let's say it's a kind animal, so it doesn't attack like no matter what. So you can just add a type parameter and put it into the table. And then here, let's say it will it cannot attack because if if uh, self dot let's say there's a you put a new thing called type equals friendly, then Return so now you can't ever call this attack function. See, it's very flexible. This is, this is a very flexible system. So every time that it does that, we'll just call this, and we'll create multiple animals to, you know, be be feral. <laughs> uh, we call this A, B, C, and Princess. <laughs> and Princess is gonna have two hundred health. Why not? So now we should see four animals spawn in and they're all gonna attack me after five seconds after being spawned in. And where is these guys? Okay, I don't know why, right? But the last script glitched out or something and uh, it actually wouldn't run even though I ran the game. So let's just call this behavior again. And let's just do the same thing. So we'll do... We'll do animal dot new. And yes, I have a plugin that automatically auto fills for me. Okay, shut up. And we just do uh, two. Yeah, we just do two. And we don't actually even have to save it into a variable. I just realized we just call it multiple times, and we can't forget that the last one's name is Princess and does two hundred health because no reason. Now we can just run the game. Oh, this one in. I need to play the game. All right. And now they're all gonna attack me. In five seconds. Or they won't. That's that's fine too. I don't mind. I I, I don't mind my code not working. It, it's fine. It's fine. I'm not I'm not mad. Oh I forgot I forgot to put it a fucking bracket in it. Oh my god, I'm gonna I'm gonna kill my right five seconds. Okay, okay, and now they're all feral. Yo yo get it. You got, and now they're humping each other. What are you guys doing? Oh my god, it's like human centipede. This is disgusting. You guys, break it up, you guys. Jesus. Now, before I end the video, 
Um, I actually want to show you one more example just to make this video a little bit more informative. So I'll take an actual example now. I created this today, but I actually use poop in my actual game. So I will just go and show you that. So every time you spawn in the game in service script servers, uh, once you pick your class, it will it will go like it will go to this one game class. Now there's a bunch of shit here, but all you have to understand is uh, this one makes it so that the moment you select a class, it will bind your keybind, so your your abilities, all that to actual to accordingly to your to your class, because each class has its own um, has its own abilities. And this load right here actually attaches the player to the class. And as you can see, module dot underscore underscore index. So let's take the physical for example. The moment you load, and each each of these uh, class has its own uh, module dot load, and you you connect the player. The moment you pick a class here, it will load and attach a player to the to its uh, the to the class object that they picked. And then, this is basically the constructor right here. Although it doesn't say new, but it still works the same way as oop. So it will set it all up like this, right? And then, this are the actual functions. So module E for hard stomp and R for blood charge. And when you press R on E, it will call the object right here. It will call the object. So you press E. It will, it will find the object and say it press E. So let's just run this function right here. As you can see, it will say self dot stomp anim play and then on the stomp uh, when when it reaches this marker, which is like a point in the animation, it will run this function, which does all the damage and hitbox stuff. So yeah, exactly what it does. So the moment I press physical. I am, uh, my player object will be attached to a uh, object-oriented programming object called physical, that is under the physical class. So, I know this may sound confusing, but I'm showing you an actual like use of OOP right now that I actually use. So, I pick the class and it load my character and attach my player to a new OOP object. And the moment I do mouse dot one or I press E or I do and I press one, it, this this right here will pick it up. This piece of code will pick up what I pressed and send the message to this script. And the reason why I use OOP here is because if I use if I have multiple physicals in one game, if I didn't use this right, uh, each physical will have its own functions and the, the code will make new functions and take up memory for each of these abilities. So this makes it so that even if there is 10 million physicals in the game, which I mean, I don't think Roblox servers can handle that many players, but let's say there's a lot of physicals in the game, um, they will all use this exact same function except uh, they pass in their own player object, so they know exactly which physical to use this uh, ability in in real time. So yeah, this is an this is an example. So yeah, that's that's a practicality for using the OOP uh, structure. Bye.